Hello, everyone. It's indeed a great pleasure to be presenting this talk on behalf of the Center of Interdisciplinary Research on Compression. I'm sorry it has to be virtual. I'd much rather uh, see my friends in person, but I, uh, I'm, I'm just honored to be able to be with all of you on this occasion. <laughs> Now, as we begin this talk, we have to pay special homage to the master, Professor Hugo Parsh, and all of the knowledge and experience that uh, I have learned from Hugo, I'm be indebted to him forever, uh, as well as the influence of St. Peregrinus in all of our lives. And also uh, the same for Giovanni, I'm indebted to him as well for carrying on the work of the master and, and adding to and providing much data uh, uh, that we find very important for wounds. And I must say that uh, either one of them could be <clears throat> give a much better talk, but uh, and I'm going to be presenting a lot of data that comes from them. But in any event, onward we go. And let us not forget the giraffe. These are my disclosures. We know that uh, the uh, short stretch compression and long stretch compression are important modalities. And unfortunately, too many people around the world are using uh, elastic compression for various purposes, including in wounds. And, and that I think is a mistake uh, uh, in many instances. Now, don't get me wrong. If you take a number of elastic wraps and you put one over the other, put two or three of them on, you get a more short stretch uh, type of compression. And of course, in the United States, that's the modus that's often used because they can sell these kits. Uh, and every time you come in for to get a wound change, you get a new kit and they put the, 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 uh, the four layers on and off you go. Uh, but in general, elastic compression is a very weak modality due to the high resting pressure, which is uncomfortable over time and a low ambulatory pressure uh, so the bandage gives away when the patient walks and the edema increases till finally it reaches a saturation point and then you have to really take the, the, uh, the bandages off uh, in order not to do damage. And the uh, difference between lying and standing uh, in an elastic bandage is nil, as you can see very clearly here on this Pico Press recording. On the other hand, inelastic short stretch compression has a low resting pressure, so it's comfortable at rest, it can be on for hours or days even. It has a high walking pressure. So as, as the patient walks, the edema decreases and the difference between the lying and standing pressure is normally over 10 millimeters. We also know that um, this has a, <clears throat> a, 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 an undesirable effect in that as the edema decreases, then the bandages tend to loosen. And that'll be one of the advantages we're going to talk about because the patient can self-adjust the uh, Velcro devices to avoid that problem. And we know that the modalities for short stretch compression are many, there's many roads to Rome, as so often uh, told to us by our Professor Parsh. And Una's boot, short stretch bandages, multiple layer elastic bandages, Velcro devices, uh, and, and, other, and other type devices, all can have that effect. Now, what about the giraffe? Most people are unaware that giraffes have venous pressure of more than 250 millimeters at their ankles. That's three times more than humans. However, giraffes do not suffer from lymphedema or venous disorders. Physiologists have discovered the answer is in the skin. Giraffe skin is inelastic, so it does not stretch. As their leg muscles contract, the veins in the legs of the giraffe are squeezed, forcing the blood toward the heart. Thus, giraffes are not susceptible to problems like venous disease and lymphedema, even though they may be on their feet for 24 hours a day. Remarkable. Now, Velcro compression are devices that utilize short stretch material, feature, of course, it features a low resting pressure providing comfort at rest and a high working pressure. And as the muscles contract, the blood is forced out of the leg, just like the giraffe. And this decrease in residual venous volume and edema produces a decrease in leg circumference, but then you can adjust them and retighten the devices. And the static stiffness index of greater than, 10, greater than 10 is ideal for treating edema. And this is ideal for treating many wounds once the exudative phase decreases. And here is a typical PicoPress 
uh, depiction of the <clears throat> Velcro device. And you can see with the pulsating that occurs during walking, this actually can simulate valvular closure. And that's a real advantage uh, that helps to heal these wounds. And there's another advantage. By lowering the venous capillary pressure, it encourages more arterial inflow from the leg, improving the circulation during the times when this patient is especially walking. Now we know that adjustable compression wraps are easy to apply as pointed out by, by our, our, our leaders, Giovanni and, uh, and Hugo, and uh, the interfresh pressure uh, will stay the same because he can adjust the, the uh, devices to maintain that. And uh, although both devices are strong and have high pressure peaks and, and hemodynamically effective, the advantage of the Velcro devices over the inelastic bandages are there is no self-management uh, uh, with the bandages. Uh, whereas, of course, with uh, uh, and, and the resulting pressure loss, and of course, for the patient, the patient can readjust the Velcro devices and maintain that pressure throughout the treatment period. We also have seen data that goes back. I had the privilege to work with Ralph De Palma in 1998 to nine, and we actually showed that the uh, circuit device was significantly less expensive than treatment with the traditional Una boots. Now there's uh, some data, but not a lot of data for adjustable Velcro wraps, 14 case series, one randomized trial and one uh, audit reporting on 192 patients. So the authors of this concluded that Velcro devices, although the evidence remains poor, they have the potential to improve outcomes for patients with venous ulceration and further good quality studies should be undertaken to evaluate these further. So now let's look at the real world, some, some clinical data. First, the circade cure. These devices are particularly useful because they can be kept on the shelf and when the patient comes in, you can cut these to suit the patient and fit it in the office without needing to send the patients to be measured at an outside facility. And, and this may have economic advantages. And here's what it looks like. You can see you can tailor it. And then uh, with these uh, the Velcro devices, you can adjust it to the patient and you can measure the pressure that you want the patient to apply. And uh, she even fits into a, a dress shoe. And here's another more sophisticated uh, application uh, from Giovanni. And here we have uh, the base layer of the bandages and then the, a, a, an adjustable strap device on top. And this particular one use, uses clips and not Velcro. Now here's one of many patients I've had over the years with venous insufficiency induced lymphedema. This patient had a previous DVT uh, and after a while was confined to a wheelchair and developed open ulcers. And initially we started with short stretch bandages, but then over a period of time, we converted to Velcro devices. This is a very industrial level Velcro device and was able to, uh, uh, it took almost a, a year, but we were able to completely rehabilitate this patient and maintain her back to a walking status. <clears throat> this is a typical example of a low drainage wound that's very amenable to Velcro device. And, and again, the same thing here. And you see, you might say, oh, well, we could just put a bandage on this. Look at the venous insufficiency here. That's not gonna go away. Once that ulcer is healed, it probably was because of a traumatic wound. Uh, once that ulcer is healed, having those Vel uh, Velcro devices on to maintain that, uh, maintain that integrity and also treat this post-thrombotic venous stasis, venous insufficiency leg is very, very important. Now here's a patient that was sent to us with an ulcer that was long standing, And you can see here the excoriation around the ulcer. This is obviously a very chronic ulcer and they were surprised it couldn't heal. Well, the answer was that the patient needed to be ablated. So superficial venous ablation is very, very important. And once we did that, we were able to heal this patient using the Velcro devices and then continuing it long-term. Now here's another case, and this was my fault. This was a 90 year old man that kept coming to our wound clinic in a wheelchair. And I kept putting these wonderful bandages on that Hugo taught me how to put this compression wrap on. We were very proud of ourselves only to have him take it off two or three days later and said, doc, I can't stand these bandages. We finally got the picture to stand him up, completely examine him. And we determined that he had marked uh, venous insufficiency. And as a result of that, 
Um, we sent him for venous ablation, and this is seven days post ablation. And here we are after six weeks, and now we were able to put Velcro devices on to get him healed and keep him healed over the long term by keeping the Velcro device on. That was the biggest problem I had in my practice almost. You'd heal all of these things, and then the patients come back with another ulcer. Well, what have you done in the meantime? Where's your compression? You've got to use your compression. This is a patient who was a 43-year-old recovered addict with morbid obesity. And this wound that I'm going to show you required nearly one year to heal using short stretch compression, grafting, and a Velcro device. And then later, late in the course of her disease, we put her in a Velcro device for long-term care, and no recurrences were uh, present after two years. So here's the lesion, and here it is fully healed. And as I said, it was over two years, and she's maintained her healing. Now, the long-term care of these patients using Velcro devices is really important. Many of these patients are aged, aged and cannot properly don and doff stockings. And 30 to 40 millimeter stockings, especially as they get older, they're pretty hard to deal with. Arthritis, extreme overweight may preclude, even preclude their use. Maintaining wound healing and Vel with the Velcro devices is an important ongoing tactic to prevent recurrences. And these devices were used successfully in all of the patients in this presentation. And here is another really important point. More than 20% of people have mixed arterial and venous disease. And many patients with ulcers have mixed arterial and venous disease. Velcro devices are ideal in providing a low resting pressure and a high working pressure. And they're easily adjusted. If the patient's exhibiting discomfort, they loosen it. If they're doing fine, they can tighten it. And as the swelling goes down, then readjust it. You must make sure that the perfusion pressure of the leg is greater than the resting pressure of the devices. So you need to measure it. Hugo's been trying to teach us and Giovanni as well with a Pico press. You have to have a dose for compression. So in these patients with mixed disease, you must know the pressure that you're putting on those patients' legs. And actually, as I said before, the arterial inflow may increase as the blood is pumped out of the leg by the, the, uh, the veins then the arterial inflow increases due to a decrease in the venous capillary pressure. So in conclusion, Velcro appliances should be considered in selective wound patients, especially when the exudate levels decrease. Inelastic properties are ideal for wound healing. Daily adjustment maintains excellent compression. The devices may be removed for wound cleansing and then reapplied with good pressure. They're an excellent choice for preventing recurrent ulceration. They're cost-effective compared to conventional bandage systems under many circumstances. And of course, ideal during COVID-19 to minimize human contact. So I'd like to thank all of you for your attention. Please visit my social media platforms and um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a great meeting. Thank you very much.